Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the communication in distributed file system, guys. Okay, okay. So in distributed file system or in network file system, we are having two major protocols, or you can say. So those are nothing but remote processor call and remote processor call to sub subsystems, guys. Okay, okay. So basically, in version three and four, the only main difference is that in version three, we are having state less, guys. okay so that is the reason why you need to do operation and you need to go back to client and store it and again you need to get for data okay so the steps will be one after the other you cannot do in a single go you cannot do all operations and come back so that is the major difference in version 3 and version 4 the word stateless and stateful guys so here if you observe the client and the server he looked up for data he got the data and he will be returning back he'll be opening the file and he'll be reading the file and he'll do all the operations so like basically it is step by step whereas in version 4 once he can do all the operations look up open read so look up he looked the data who opened the data he read the data and he returned back so in this way so the major differences between the stateless and stateful is this only guys okay so as a two different rpcs are required here only one rpc is required okay so after first rpc the data is opened at the end of we will see the data file that's it okay so similarly moving on to rpc to subset subsystems okay so rpc2 is a package that offers the reliability of rpcs guys on top of the unreliability udp protocol so basically udp is nothing but user datagram protocol which is used in wireless guys so that is the reason why it is not more reliable when compared to tcp so that is the reason why whenever you are using udp you will be using rpc2 guys rather than rpc okay so rpc2 is you can say in some kind of extension which increases the reliability of rpc okay so each time a remote processor call is called the rpc2 client code starts a new thread that sends the request to the server subsequently blocks until it receives the answer okay so the basic flow diagram will be in this way guys so client application server so client side effect rpc stub so it will be requesting and here also will be getting and you will be getting the data okay so you can just write it in your own words guys the simple flow okay when some data changes so hence the invalidation of run okay so basically if you want this can be run in both one after the other and always in the parallel way guys so the updates and all those things so if it is done one after the other assume that the client once data is up receiving okay so it will be validating it okay and it will be giving reply so if it is one after the other it will be doing one after the other if it is at the time it will be doing it at the time guys at a time okay the validation or invalidation any kind of process okay okay so i hope everyone got some basic idea about this communication part so in the next lecture we will be discussing about a naming guys okay so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching